From the BBR Studios, this is Line Locked, where we talk about everything racing and a little bit more. I am your co-host, Chris, with my partner, Corey. And I'm here. Hey, are you here? I'm here. Are you here? I think that's how we started the last one off. Yeah. Uh, well, this is episode three. So This is episode three, and let me tell you, it's... It's a little cold in here. I'm, it's I'm not a sure. Touch nipply. Yeah, it's uh, it's gotten down to like 30 degrees over the past couple of days. We're starting to warm up, but in this uh, shop here, it is a little bit chilly. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could run the heater, but you guys wouldn't like it. Yeah, it's a it's a little loud. It's a little <laughs> loud. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful. Uh, well, this is on Sunday, but hopefully a wonderful week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you go to church? Uh, yeah, just got back. Just got back from church. Did you mm-hmm. eat some uh, donuts and mm-hmm. some crackers and some wine? I got, I got church at Waffle House. <laughs> Waffle House Church, yeah. What do you have at Waffle House? Fiesta Omelette. Fiesta Omelette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't go for and the waffle? No, I like the Fiesta Omelette, and then I get a uh, hash browns peppered. Peppered hash browns? Mm-hmm. So it's it's not peppered. It's, that's what they call jalapenos. Huh? So you pepper it. I remember when I was a kid, we, uh, me and my uh, my dad, uh, we went to Waffle House one time, traveling across the United States, and uh, there was a roach in our hash browns. What? Yeah. Well, that's just fl- added flavor. That was added flavor, yeah. They didn't even charge you extra, did they? No, but he, they gave him his <laughs> meal for free, but didn't give me my meal for free. That really? Was, yeah, it was weird. Uh, I was like, hey, man, this is a team effort here, man. Yeah, uh, crazy. Hey, uh, so what's going on in the news in the racing world? Well, first, we got one thing on my oh, heads yeah, up at yeah, the very beginning. Right. Anybody that emails us at linelockpodcast at gmail.com and give us an address. We are going to send you, I'm going to probably blow it up on the screen. Uh, we will send you a nice little Christmas ornament. Yeah. So it's uh, got a little Santa race car guy and Blood Brothers Racing on there. So make sure you email us or comment down below if you're on the YouTube channel. But you still have to message us on Facebook yep. uh, in order to get an address. And for, uh, for those of you that are actually just listening on the podcast and don't see the visuals, it's a really nice uh, square uh, Christmas uh, ornament type deal. It's like a dash plaque, and they'll, they'll, we'll have some where you just stick it on something, but we'll also have a hole in a little string. You could hang it from your Christmas tree. Yeah, so it's real nice. You can yeah. go to go to bloodbrothersracing.com, and you will put a picture of it the, on there for you. Yep, or line locked. Yeah, or line locked. Yeah, that's no, it. Unless. You know where to find us, hopefully, by now. It's episode three, guys. Get with the program. All right, so in the news, uh, a former cup champion – Racer Kevin Harvick, he retires after 23 years at the wheel. That's a long time. Oh, yeah. I remember when he time. first came on, um, he was replacing Dale, Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt Sr. Yeah, after he uh, It was passed. a rush job, too, because he was supposed to be mentored by Dale Earnhardt Sr. And then when he had passed, they had yeah. to just throw him in the car. Yeah. So he, uh, he has 60 victories over those 23 seasons, which wow. puts him in number 10. Wow. Of uh, all race car, NASCAR drivers. That's a pretty big deal. And I, I will tell you from my experience, I used to watch NASCAR all the time. And, uh, you know, nowadays I don't really watch it as much um, just because it's not as exciting as the old days when you had like Bill Elliott, Dale yeah. Earnhardt. Um, and I was really rooting for uh, Junior mm-hmm. uh, throughout his uh, career. And, you know, he didn't do excellent, but man, he's he's a great racer and a great. Um, What's, what's the term? Spokesman for... I was oh, going to yeah. say sports, sp- you know, <laughs> spokes I, I would, model. I would I put him to akin to us in drag racing. Yes. <laughs> yes. You almost had it. You, you almost, almost had it. <laughs> no, he's, all of it's pretty cool. But it's, yeah. uh, it's interesting that 23 years... I think he wanted to spend some time with his family. Also, he's going to be rolling into the announcer booth from oh, next yeah. season. So That'd be good. he'll be yeah. part of the broadcasting team, Yeah, which is cool. Uh, again, if you wanted to read the article that I'm reading this from, I'll have it linked in the show notes below. There we go. Uh, next order of business is the drifting legend, Ch- legend Chelsea Denofo, which is in, uh, I don't know if you guys watch drifting, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, he runs in the Formula Drift League, and he decided to retire as well. So this is like a retirement. So it's a guy? It is, yep, it is a guy. It's a guy named Chelsea? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. neat. It's like a boy named Sue. Oh, <laughs> wow. Or it's Pat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> uh, anyway, Chelsea has a, an impressive nine wins out of the ten uh, finals appearances, which is 90% of the time he makes it to the finals, he's winning, which is pretty cool. Um, he has a total of 56 rounds of competition and a 17 podiums out of those 56 rounds. So that's nine wins, one second, and seven thirds. So how do you win in drifting? I'm curious. Yeah, I, have no, so, I know nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, I've watched it, and I 100% don't – you can't – Fake news. <laughs> right here, I'm going to put it on there. Uh, for the most part, it's it's a judged event 
that you got, you have to, your first lap, when you're racing somebody, you go two times. The first one, you're leading, and the guy has to chase you. The second one, you're chasing, and the other guy's leading you. Okay. And it's the tighter you keep the cars together, drifting in the higher angles, and the most smoke. So there's a lot. It's a judgment. It's it's almost uh, like a pageantry. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it's but it's cool. Uh, so there's all kinds of different power adders to it. Uh, a lot of guys use nitrous. A lot of guys use turbos. You know, it's some naturally aspirated. It's an interesting thing. Um, you know, everybody's got to deal with their bullshit though, because that's a lot of tires to replace. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> you know, they probably go through a few of those in an event. So you know, it's pretty wild. I, I find it interesting. Not that it's my favorite thing to watch, but it's pretty cool. And uh, Chelsea Donofo is one of the biggest stars of the whole entire league, and for him to retire is a pretty big deal. So you know, good for him. I yeah. think he wanted to do something a little different. Is all I might have to tune in one of those because that's kind of interesting. To, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's well, next year. We'll definitely we'll highlight it for yeah. sure. Cool. Well, All good. Right. Good for him, man. Yep. Congratulations, Chelsea. Here yep. we go. And tech tip: If you're cold, they're cold. Put your race cars inside for the winter. Okay. Oh well, that should be a given. Yeah. You but, need to. You need to. If you haven't done already, you need to winterize those race cars. So what we have to do is basically just drain the water, uh, or we use uh, you know alcohol based water. Uh, but it still doesn't freeze protect. So we got to drain all that. Yeah. And we take all our valve springs off or rockers to loosen the valve springs up over the winter because uh, you don't want uh, one to get a little worn out just because it's sitting in the open position for the entire winter. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. And this is your reminder to do it too. Yeah. What do you think? I, well. You got anything to add to that? You know, I've always. Oh, knew also, a, parachutes. Make sure you pull your parachutes. Yeah, definitely pull your parachutes and get those. Uh, don't you have to put some kind of like. Um, baby powder. Baby powder in there, yeah, yeah, to make sure they don't. Uh, but pull your like pull your chutes to keep that spring from relaxing. Uh, and maybe get you a little bit, a few more years out of it if you pull your chute. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, battery tender. Got got to put that battery tender on there. Or at least get the battery unconnected. But I'd put a tender on it. Just one of those cheap forty dollar tenders you can get from Amazon. Um, and then you know, put a car cover on it. It's going to be cold out there. Especially if you got cats in your garage. <laughs> I got I got lots of cats <laughs> in this barn. I'm surprised you hadn't seen them in the podcast yet, or maybe heard them. <laughs> we we go through cats quite often out here. We live on a farm, and uh, whenever they knock down the hay or the the cornfields, we get mice. So we have to have barn cats. Yeah, and we cycle through them. It's, you, I was getting ready to say <laughs> we cycle. You through cycle them. through them quite. Yeah. A few. So in the summertime, they uh, they hang out outside and inside. So they got a place to go, whatever. Yeah. But. Some of them are dumb enough to go hang out in the road and, yeah. and play uh, Frogger. <laughs> and me and Chris got to witness one uh, lose at Frogger <laughs> this year, and it was pretty sad. <laughs> we had hope for it for about a split second. It's yeah. like, oh, well, they might uh, be okay. No, they're not okay. No, definitely not okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we keep two out here uh, all the time, and when one plays Froggers and loses, uh, we go to the shelter and get yeah. us another one. Yeah. So it's a catch and release program. It usually takes them a little bit of time to warm up to us, but – this last one, man, we uh, we didn't get it from the shelter. We got it from my wife's uh, parents live in another area in, in a farm farming community, and this cat was just roaming outside as a long-haired cat, yeah. and uh, it was all matted up. It was so bad that we had to we had to shave half of it. It's kind of got a, like a lion's cut right now, just <laughs> trying to get the matting out of it, out of its hair. We don't normally keep long-haired cats out here, and if we had a per- preference, we'd get a short-haired cat. But uh, this one just kind of came to us. So. I feel like there should be some background music uh, in the arms <laughs> yeah, of the angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ASPCA <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey, just as a f- friendly reminder, uh, have your uh, cat spayed or neutered because <laughs> All right, way, Bob too Barker. Many, way too many of them out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on. Um, this episode, you guys get the luxury of meeting my wife. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk to her about what is it like to uh, – have to deal with my bullshit for one but you know in racers in general on a lot of us don't even think about what it feels like to be a wife of a guy that leaves for many days on time and also in the shop many days or nights at time so we're going to talk with her yep so she's gonna call in here you know let's see here ring 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 <laughs> ring ring and we're bringing her up how you doing there debbie hello can you hear me okay yep we can hear you just fine can you hear us Yes, I'm tuning in from the kids' room. From the kiddos. So we just wanted to have you on and uh, get your perspective as a racer's wife. How do you, what, what kind of um, challenges does, do you face with uh, all the amount of time and effort that, I, that goes into something like this? Well, I mean, for me, I think it might be a little bit different than other racer's wives, uh, being that you are gone three days a week as it is for your main job. 
but the amount of time and effort it takes you guys and you and, know and money. to work on your cars mm-hmm. and money money i've just kind of like lit in one ear and out the other uh, <laughs> yeah, and it goes point, it goes in one pocket and out the <laughs> other as well <laughs> right exactly at this point it's like it's gonna cost what it costs i mean yeah. you you work and support that habit so and it is habit like it null habit. void uh and yes i called it a habit it's true but as far as like being home uh you don't really see your drag racer a lot. And I think this is probably for a lot of significant others because you have male and female drag racers. So maybe sure. they're significant, significant others. Um, the lack of, are we going to get raw here? Yeah, absolutely. With this is what, hey, okay. this is the line lock podcast. You, you say what you want to say, baby. The amount of times, like I sometimes feel that spouses, children are put on the back burner mm-hmm. when it comes to, Drag racing, I mean. Or racing in general, not just drag racing. I mean, Or racing in general, right. Yeah. Or any hobby of that nature. I mean, the amount of time and effort you have to put into it to get it ready to race. Uh, yeah. You're not home often. Well, you're home, but you're, Out you're outside of the home. Yeah, I'm out yeah, there. Yeah, and it, it's that, tough. that kind of sucks. But at the same time, I try to look at it like, who am I to stop somebody from their hobby and what makes them happy? You being inside more would make me happy, but then at the same time, it would turn around and not make you happy. So I feel like there's a line that everybody has to figure out what works for them. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. I, I, you know, at least in a marriage, and we could go down the Dr. Phil route here, you know, there's a lot of give and take. And if, if, uh, if you're not happy or I'm not happy, our relationship's not happy. So, you right. know, if, if, if this gets taken away from me, uh, what it's it's a part of my identity, and I think a lot of these racers that are watching this podcast can relate to that. You know, this is this is part of who I am, and I can really appreciate it. And part of the reason I married you was I, I you know, you deal with it, and that's it's a tall ask for a lot of families. So we really appreciate that, uh, or I really appreciate that. I, I think Chris actually appreciates that too because you allow him to to you know be out here with me and and all that. So it's it's tough. Uh, what do you happen? What do you do for a living, Deb? I deal with dust collection and air pollution control. You want to, so. yeah, you want to give that a little plug? No, mm, no probably not. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I went a bridge too far. <laughs> no, that's okay. You can just leave it. At, I mean, yeah, who, there's a lot, but, there's a lot yeah. of acronyms you can go with that, huh? But, really, really boring if anybody's wondering. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we also have a daughter that does uh, soccer. Yeah. So, and that You're takes, yeah. takes up a lot of your time as well. And that does take up a lot of my time. And equally, I mean, it might not cost as much as drag racing, but it is equally just as expensive, you know, yep. for for what you get. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's all relative. When, right. But typically, like, when you're out racing, we're out at games or tournaments or regional sectionals. So mm-hmm. it does take up a lot of time. And that's where most people don't see me over at the drag side. It's yeah. not that I'm not a supportive spouse. It's like, Hey, I've got two people that have hobbies and interests that they both love. And unfortunately the kid's going to trump the husband. Sorry. You guys, yeah, it's a hundred percent as it should be yeah. as, as yeah, God, so. as God intended it. <laughs> All right. right. Well, so do you, when the times that you had made it to the track with us, did you enjoy your time there? Or is it something that you're just not totally, you know, vested in? Like you could go either way with it. I could go either way. Uh, Drag racing is not my thing. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it's really not. But but at the same time, I enjoy going because it's what makes you happy. And if it makes you happy, then it makes me happy, too. So, sure. uh, I mean, I, I do like to see certain racers. I mean, Sam Patrick, shout out to him. He's one of my favorite. And that might be because I'm friends with one of his friends, you know. So, it's more of a personal relationship there. Right. But, uh and I think part of at least the drag racing side of things is if you're there more and build more relationships with people that you get more out of it uh, because, you know, our time is limited, actual racing part of it. You know, we maybe on right. a, a finals day, you may make five laps. And if you're only going eight and a half seconds at a time, that's not much time on the track. So, you know, the relationships around drag racing is what makes drag racing fun. So it's tough, it's, you know, if, if you're not there consistently and it's tough to build those relationships. And because right. we have the daughter and doing the soccer's and you know everything else in your life, it, you just can't make it every time, for sure. Right. 
And I'm a diehard soccer mom that does not drive a minivan. Just to put that out there. <laughs> well, you you've drove a lot of vehicles. I, I think I've counted. You've got like five vehicles to my one truck, <laughs> so, and I've had that truck that, for uh, like that's eight being years. Generous. Yeah, it's probably being right. generous. All right. Do you have anything to add to this, Chris? Well, no. I was going to ask. You know, you have made a pretty big. Um, I don't know what term sacrifice uh, to be able to follow Corey and what he does and allow him to do what he does. And uh, what does he do for you? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so so you woke you woke me? up and chose argument, huh? <laughs> yes, uh, yes. <laughs> he chose violence. So what has he done for you, you lately? <laughs> I think you know racing is his identity. Soccer is my kid's identity. And that's what makes him happy. What makes me happy at the end of the day is seeing others happy. And and then family. Family's first and foremost, number one to me. She's so, a giver. She's a giver. That's that's what he does. I mean, seeing him happy in what he does, I mean, that makes me happy. And I think that's enough. I mean, I would rather have a spouse that is happy because they're doing things that they enjoy in life rather than if he's not drag racing, be miserable. Yeah, for sure. So his happiness brings me happiness. You know, and, and the thing is, is I would find something to fill the void. You know, I mean, I, I'm just a guy that always is on the move. So if I'm not doing something, I actually have anxiety about it. So, you know, it, right. it, it's you got to, you know, choose your poison, I suppose. But, you know. But at the same time, when you're spending hours in the garage, I can binge watch my TV shows. <laughs> you're damn yeah. straight. Yeah. You're damn straight. You should watch them. <laughs> but... All right. Do you have anything to add to this? Do you have any uh, anything you want to say about it? Um, no, that's a no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Debbie, do you uh, do you have any socials you want to push out there? Like TikTok um, or something like go that? Go to TikTok and check out howto.monabear. There you go. Where we do stupid things when Corey's not home in his garage. Yeah, she does do including that. Including starting his race truck. Yeah, well, that's well. that, and that, we just talked about it. We are, we are winterizing these guys, so you can't even. So hit that's the, not going to be an option. You can't but even hit okay. the starter There's plenty button. Plenty of other fun things. <laughs> plenty of other fun things. So. All right, so check her out at How to Mama Bear on TikTok. How to dot. Mama Bear. How to dot Mama Bear. And we'll put it on the screen yeah. so you can find that. She's on TikTok and she's a lot of fun to watch, especially her lives. Yeah, you've just been taking up welding here recently, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, she has. She she is <laughs> she has done certified. she's done some things with a welder that I, I do not approve of. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you for talking with us, Deb, and I love you. Yeah. And uh you love know you too. maybe we'll have love you, you on too, Chris. Love you. <laughs> maybe we'll have you on again if if some viewer mail comes in and asks wants to ask Mama Bear about something. Yeah, now back to house cleaning. It's right. Sunday. <laughs> okay, we'll see you, babe. Bye. All right, bye. Oh, great. So that was our guest. Just like you could be a guest if you wanted to be. Uh, you know, you just got to let us know. Yeah, it's good to be able to kind of dive into the other aspect of, of racing in general. Of, you know, how does your family members handle it? Because it does take a lot of dedication Absolutely. and a lot of money to do it. You know, we've talked about it in the past. Drag racing in particular, you have the least amount of time doing it and spending the most amount of money. <laughs> yeah. So in a weekend, if yeah. you go, let's say you race, go down the strip you know, six times yeah. at 10 seconds, just being generous, 10 seconds each time, that's 60 seconds. One minute. One minute for thousands and thousands of dollars and time that and, you put in there. And people ask me why I like long burnouts. I just want to be in the car longer. <laughs> so. Yeah, for sure. It's a it's a weird sport, man. It really is. Yeah. Uh, but like I've told most people, when you're winning uh, at the track, when you're winning, you're probably only really winning at the track 5%. Yeah. The other 95% is done here at home mm -hmm. or even in the pits. Yes. You know, uh, there's a lot of calculations. A lot definitely. Of cool. So, I hope you enjoyed that little segment with my wife, and we're going to move on to, uh, this is viewer mail. Yeah, we got some viewer mail, actually, uh, for our third third episode. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, the first one, and this is kind of a technical question, maybe a, a question about uh, what you prefer, but uh, Zachary wrote us and said and asked, what would you recommend, a three-speed variant or a power glide? Yeah, for uh, what we do indexing. Uh, even bracket racing, um, I would say power glides king. Um, you, the only time that I would ever run like a three speed is if I was trying to meet an index that I didn't have enough horsepower for, and you need that extra gear. Yeah, you know, if you're real close, you could add some ET there yeah. or takeaways, however you want to look at it. 
So that's about the only time I would ever run a three speed. Those power glides are they're used on all makes of engines. Yeah. So I mean they have the adapters to put For those on the behind Ford, Mopars. But let's and, be fair. I mean the turbo four hundred you can convert to a three speed. Uh, they had the same type of bell housing system. You can change those yeah. to whatever. Um, you know, that's personally where I would be at is power glide all the way and then you gotta over horsepower to make what you're trying to do done. But you know, that's probably your best bet just for consistency reasons you know every shift that you that happens if you look at a race pack graph anyway you know there's a little blip and if you add that little blip to another little blip that could change your et by quite a bit so yeah. that's why power glide has been king and in, in most of our racing heads up racing you know three six speed whatever uh that linko <laughs> you know although because then it's just about max performance and you're you know getting there uh the fastest you're not worried about meeting a number each time. So that's the reason the power glide just, it's one more, it's le one less thing of inconsistency. Yeah. Is that about what you feel about it, Tim? Oh, yeah. I mean, just having the two speeds, you don't have to worry about one shift point. And uh, for us trying to get to our number every time, that seems to be the most consistent. Now, I mean, on mine, there's something effed up on my transmission. So it shifts whenever it wants to shift. <laughs> yeah, I can whenever it, it feels like it. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll set it for 6,300, and it'll shift at 7,700. And then the next time, it'll be 7,200 or 6,000. So uh, that's one thing we got to do with we, the week. Yeah, uh, we got to address that. We got to pull the transmission yeah. and get her sent out. Yeah. So our next question is from Tim. And I'm assuming this is for us. Uh, how much horsepower are your vehicles, and what speeds and ETs are you running in the eighth and the quarter mile? I'll let you go ahead and start. Uh, the truck is, you know, on a good day, it's just right around maybe a thousand horsepower. Now we can add a couple hundred with blower teeth, but to get to my 90 index, we were trying to get around 900 horsepower uh, to make it consistent, uh, and then shifting it really fast so you you don't have as much torque built up from the transmission to get to the 90. Um, the speeds i think i'm like 126 in the eighth at 572 567 somewhere around there in the quarter we're running 90 at 152 150 to 152 uh, and then if we you know add that extra horsepower and we actually get it off the line, which shouldn't be a bigger deal next year when I get bigger tires. Uh, we've been able to get it down to low 560s in the eighth and uh, low uh, 860s in the quarter. Uh, the quarter was like 157, I think. And then eighth mile, I don't 100% remember, but it's closer to 130. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. What about you, Chris? Well, um, the first year, um, we had a non-known motor. What, you know, we were told it was a, what did we say, a 408. And come to find out it was just a 350, maybe a 355. Built for nitrous. Built for nitrous, <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we bought it specifically because a motor built, built for nitrous would probably do still do pretty well with the blower. So we yeah. were hoping to just put a blower on it. So as we took that thing apart, we realized it wasn't what it was supposed to be. But um, when I first started racing it last year, I mean, we were running high 11s. Uh, one of the first things we did was we changed out the rear gear, went to a taller gear, uh, which really was not for our benefit. Um, and so I did get it down to 1132 was my best pass last year. And then this year, we had the motor totally gone through by uh, Performance Automotive and dynoed it, and uh, dynoed at 690 uh, with uh, a 50 tooth uh, blower pulley on the top. Yeah, and then we've kind of gone uh, up on the blower pulley size to slow it down to bring less power into the motor to get it at our 10 second index. But the most I've run, or the best I've run on that, is a 980 at 137. So that's still pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, for it's very yeah. fast. What yeah. about the eighth mile? Do you remember your eighth uh, mile? My best eighth mile was a 622. Yeah, that's about well. Because uh, you were telling me about how uh, in an eighth mile, or at least the track we were racing that, that that's kind of on, that's well, they, faster I think than what NHRA they doesn't want you to go faster than, like, I think it's 639 <laughs> or something well, like that tough. Um, uh, with without a full cage. Yeah. It could be 629, but I think it's 639. Yeah. It was weird because I was running uh, 632 at my 10 yeah. And it was still faster than what they would 
let me run a quarter mile and it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So I knew it was a little bit higher. I think it's 639. Yeah. So the Nova only has a roll bar in it and not a roll cage and, and it's not certified or anything like that. So we don't want to go any faster than 10 seconds on the quarter. Uh, NHRA won't let us. So, NHRA is watching Jesse. Yeah. yeah. They won't let us though. So that's kind of where we're stuck there. But uh, good question, uh, Tim. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, we have another question here from Shelly. Hey, uh, and she's like, and this kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. Are you required to have a license to drag race your cars? I wonder if she means uh, like a normal DMV license. or <laughs> That's a good question because uh, there's two. Um, yeah, well, and you know, that's a good question. I mean, do you have to have one of those? <laughs> I don't know. They've never asked us because yeah, we look like old folks. We yeah, like, you know. Yeah, definitely don't get carded. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I assume in order to race a big car, you're probably going to have to have a driver's license if they check for it. Um, but as far as on the strip, which I assume that this is what the question means is in order to go faster than 10 O in a door car, you got to have a competitions license and that gets you down to 750 in the quarter before you have to get a modified license to yeah. go a little faster than that. Yeah. There's also some licensing differences between if you're going to run a dragster versus a altered or a normal door car. Uh, longer wheelbases yeah. change your licensing. So there's, I think there's like six different licenses you can get. And getting a license is not just a matter of applying. You actually have to go out and prove that you can run these times. Yeah. So you, you have to do six laps. Yes. Uh, your first four are un, not full length passes. And then your last two are full passes. And they have to be indicative of the license you're running. So if you're trying to go uh, to get your license for, for instance, my license, you have to run under 10 twice. Uh, your final two passes in order to qualify. And then you have to get it signed off by other licensed drivers saying that they saw you do it. Mm -hmm. He did what he did. Yeah. Uh, and I, I did that last year. <clears throat> yeah. So you got your license all set up then. Yep. I'm a fully competitive licensed holder. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Our last question real quick here. Um, this is from Jackson, uh, who is our NDRL champion for 2023 in the Pro Comp uh, division. Yeah. He says... Why do you guys lose so much? <laughs> well, hurtful, buddy. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you see it though. I. I don't always lose. <laughs> what about you, Chris? I don't see nothing in front of you. There's nothing in front of mine. So um, I don't even see like a little participation award. Or yeah. Anything here. <laughs> Just a feel good award. Yeah. Uh, why do we lose so much? Is because you're always there, Jackson. Wins. Yes. That's yeah. why. <laughs> you Even though we're in different divisions, you still scare us out of winning our own. You are a machine, man. Yeah, a machine. Amazing. All right. But to be quite honest with you, why don't anybody win so much? Because it's hard. Yeah. It's super and what's hard. And the, what's the saying? It's like 90% luck and then... there's you got to have a little bit of luck on your side, yeah. but you got to have a lot of preparation to, to, to yeah. earn that luck. And on top of that, again, this is a one and done style racing, boys. I mean, you make one mistake. Yeah. There's a million ways to lose and only one way to win. Yeah, and you got less than, you know, depending on the class, less than 10 seconds, you can make a mistake and you're done for the whole weekend. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that question. Uh, we want to make sure you guys remember to email us at linelockedpodcast at gmail.com yep. or find us and comment below and find us on Facebook and message us your address so we can send you our nice little, uh, you know, Christmas, Christmas ornament, ornament or, or dash plaque. You can just put it somewhere. Stick it on your fridge. Give it away for free. You just got to send us uh, the link. We're not putting you on any mailing list or nothing like that. We're just trying to give our viewers, the people that support us, a little something. Yep. So make sure you do that. Anything else we got, Chris? Well, just remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you know uh, every time a new episode comes out on Sundays at 8 p.m. And we're, I think we're going to do it right this time. Are we? I'm Chris. And I'm Corey. And we are Line Locked. <laughs> 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 <laughs>